It's the sacred season of Lent, that time of year when Christians give up things to draw closer to God. Recall the three discipl disciplines of Lent, our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. One of the questions people frequently have about Lent pertains to fasting and abstinence. It always surprises me in my discussions with others that usually say, oh, you still don't eat meat on Fridays? Like it was a thing to do as a child and then we don't follow it as adults? Well, yes, I do, and yes, it's important for our spiritual growth. But maybe we've forgotten why we fast and abstain, or maybe we don't know why we do it in the first place. In this video, we'll be discussing fasting and abstinence and answer some questions, for example, why it's important, is it required, what's the history of fasting in the church? Connected to fasting is the practice of abstinence with its own set of questions. Let's explore. To begin, let's start with some basic definitions. Fasting has long been recognized as an excellent means of penance with many spiritual benefits. In this postmodern world, however, the practice of fasting as a means of spiritual benefit has fallen into disuse. Today, people talk about fasting in different ways, often with enhancing physical health in mind. We might think of juice fasts or water fasts or carb fasts. The focus is more often on the physical advantages of fasting, while its spiritual benefits are often disregarded. Spiritually speaking, fasting has a different meaning. The Christian recognizes the primary importance of remaining spiritually healthy in view of eternal life, as opposed to a myopic pagan view in which the material and temporal are given all the emphasis. So what does it mean to fast in terms of Lent? Well, to fast is to abstain from meat. St. Thomas the Aquinas noticed that, notes that fasting consists of taking only one meal a day. This definition has been refined recently by church in terms of what's allowed during Lent. What about the origin and history of fasting in the church? Well, there's an ancient practice of fasting in sorrow and repentance for sins found in the Old Testament. Fasting also accompanied fervent prayer to God. The idea was that fasting made one's prayer more acceptable to God. It was a way of demonstrating one's level of commitment before the Lord. These ideas remain valid today. God desires that we prove our love for him. As the old adage goes, actions speak louder than words. We can also make a distinction between fasting and abstinence in reference to the Lenten precept of the church to observe the days of fasting and abstinence. When abstinence is used in reference to Lent, we are speaking about regulating the quality of food that is taken. For example, on Ash Wednesday, Friday of the Lord's Passion or Good Friday, and all other Fridays during Lent, Catholics are obliged to abstain from eating flesh meat. On Ash Wednesday and Friday of the Lord's Passion or Good Friday, Catholics abstain and fast from flesh meat. In the concepts of anticipation and preparation for the Lord Jesus, we find a connection to the practice of fasting and abstinence during Lent. Lent is a time of penance and atonement for sin and preparation for the celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. Fasting and abstinence are integral to the preparation for several reasons, such as building virtue, self-mastery, and helping to avoid sinful tendencies that may ultimately, ultimately lead to spiritual death in the case of mortal sin. Abstinence laws consider that meat come only from animals such as chicken, cows, sheep, or pigs, all of which live on land. Birds also are considered meat. Abstinence does not include meat juices and liquid foods from meat that are made from meat. Uh, thus, such foods as chicken broth, consomme, soups cooked or flavored with meat, meat gravies or sauces, as well as seasonings or condiments made from animal fat are technically not forbidden. However, uh, moral theologians have traditionally taught that we should abstain from all animal-derived products except foods such as gelatin, butter, cheese, and eggs, which do not have any meat taste. Fish are a different category of animal, and we can eat that. Salt and freshwater species of fish, amphibians, reptiles, or cold-blooded animals, and shellfish are permitted where acceptable.
Because the season of Lent is of penitential character, the church sets forth the days of penance as Ash Wednesday and all Fridays during Lent. Catholics are obliged to fast and abstain from flesh meat on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and abstain from flesh meat on all other Fridays during Lent. These requirements are binding on Catholics within the following age groups. Catholics from age 18 up through the beginning of their 60th year, meaning their 59th birthday, are required to fast unless they have a serious reason not to do so. It's often thought that a person can have one full meal and two lesser meals that cannot add up to a full meal. But these laws don't require us to weigh up food to make sure it doesn't equate to a full meal. The point is only one full meal is allowed and one can take some food two other times on that day. Liquids such as juice, coffee, tea, or milk do not technically violate the fast, although refraining from ingesting any animal products such as milk is virtuous. Catholics who have reached age 14 are required to abstain from flesh meat on Ash Wednesday and all Fridays during Lent. If a solemnity or a holy day happens to fall on a Friday, abstinence is not required on that day. Notice there is no upper age limit on the requirement to abstain from meat, just fasting. Those who are excused from fast and abstinence outside the age limits include the physically or mentally ill, including individuals suffering from chronic illness such as diabetes. Also excluded are pregnant or nursing women. In all cases, common sense should prevail and ill persons should not jeopardize their health by fasting. Catholics fast and abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Catholics abstain from meat on Fridays during Lent. The Church's precepts on fasting and abstinence are reasonable, biblically based, and spiritually beneficial. In these acts of penance, we not only help to atone for our sins and build self-mastery, a virtue which is of enormous benefit even in, even in our life this side of heaven. So I hope that you found this video a little informative and hopefully I've inspired you to think about your journey in Lent and how fasting and abstinence can be a spiritual practice in your Lenten journey. Thanks to Catholic.org for the information used in this video today. I'm Mr. Senora. Have a happy Friday.